So, I'm just going to come right out and say it. I think the pilot of the third season of My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, has been the worst episode in the entire series. So, if you haven't already seen it, I recommend you go watch it now because... Spoilers! Yeah, lots of them. This entire video, just spoilers. When I first read the episode summaries from The Hub and from FYI, I was excited! I was like, hey, they're adding something called the Crystal Empire to the map. Great, world building. I love world building. And then when they released the 8 minute preview and we learned about the villain, I got really excited. The villain is male? And his name is King Sombra? And he effectively makes an entire city disappear? Fuck yeah, right? Because hey, I love me a good villain. Everyone loves a good villain. Here's the thing. He was not a good villain. He was a trace of a villain, an outline. A ghost. He was the idea of a villain rather than a true villain himself. Let me explain. So, here is literally everything we know about King Sombra. He's a unicorn. He's evil. To quote, uh, his heart is as black as night, which if I was Luna, I would take offense to that. He took over the Crystal Empire. He turned it into effectively a slave camp. He was turned into a shadow by Celestia and Luna. He cursed the Empire. And he has some sort of black magic. I, I don't know. And that was it. Now, if you're not seeing why that might not be enough, let me sort of spell it out for you. Motivation. See, Nightmare Moon was fueled by jealousy and then her thirst for revenge. Discord was the embodiment of chaos. Queen Chrysalis was trying to ensure the survival of her species. Every one of them had legitimate emotional or practical reasons for doing what they did. But King Sombra had none of that. Why is he evil? Uh huh. Why did he take over the Crystal Empire? Uh huh. Where was he before all of this? Uh huh. All of this comes down to backstory. Backstory, backstory, backstory. The backstory is what drives an evil scientist. It is the why does he do what he does of the what does he do. Every character needs a backstory, but villains especially because we need to know why we shouldn't like them, or even if they're worth taking seriously. Because of how little the writers told us about him, King Sombra was made as less than a proper villain. In fact, I would say he wasn't the real villain at all. See, being a villain is all about creating and raising the stakes for the hero because the plot revolves around the hero. Without James Bond, all of the Bond movies would be just about some guy rising to power. It would be a pretty boring movie. Even who the villain is revolves around the priorities and motivations of the hero. In Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, the archetypical villain is the hero. And the hero is the villain. In narratives, protagonist and antagonist are all subjective. So, if I'm telling you that Sombra wasn't the villain, then the next logical question would be, who is? Well, Celestia says from the get-go that Twilight is the hero. So, think about what Twilight was worried about the entire time. A test? Test! 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 test. Her test! Yes, the entire Crystal Empire was in danger, but her whole understanding of the event was within the context of this test. Need to get info from the NPC Crystal Ponies? A research paper! Huh? Her worst fear? You failed the test, Twilight. See, it's passing the test that's the real goal. Saving the Crystal Empire is just one of the conditions in accomplishing that goal. It's only when Twilight you decides to ignore to the, the conditions the of the test that she actually accomplishes the real goal of the story by having Spike deliver the crystal heart. 
So who was the real villain? The test. The test was. Saving Equestria? Ah, they've already done that three times. It's nothing new, and Twilight would have done a test or no test. The test was Twilight's personal villain, because it raised the stakes of the journey by adding the risk of disappointing Princess Celestia, her mentor, friend, and demigod. But the problem is that it really was Twilight's personal villain. All the other ponies were busy just trying to keep the crystal ponies calm. They couldn't do anything else because, as far as they were concerned, Twilight was the only one who could save the day. As for Somber himself, if he was anyone's villain, I'd have to say he was Princess Cadence's. But, from a narrative perspective, he served as little more than a timing device, counting down to the end of the episode going, I'm coming to get ya, I'm coming to get ya. But he never does. And that's really the crux of this whole issue. See, if you're going to be doing a big bad story, your big bad needs to be big and bad. There needs to be real risk, and that risk needs to be felt by everyone, especially the audience. The villain needs to give the audience an oh shit moment. In the first pilot, it was when Nightmare Moon shattered the stone orbs that everyone up until that point thought was the elements of harmony. Discords was when he finally broke Twilight's spirit. Chrysalis had a couple of them. The first one was when she sent Twilight to the Crystal Caverns. The second was when she took down Celestia. These are the moments when, if you stop it right there, that's it. The bad guys won. Game over. It's done. Period. But there was no oh shit moment here. Sombra flopped as a villain and it killed the story because the story isn't supposed to be about how Twilight's passing some metaphorical test by Celestia. It's supposed to be about how they saved the lost Crystal Empire from this unexplained return of this King Sombra who's some malicious badass. That's the real story. That was the high stakes. Not this. In the end, this episode needed a good villain, and it didn't have one. What it got was a story about a student trying to get a good grade. And that's why this episode is among the worst in the series. Let the flame wars begin! Hello, and welcome to the end of the video. <laughs> It's 3 in the morning and I'm feeling a little silly. Um, if you liked this video and you'd like to see some more like it, uh, check out the videos on the bottom here. Uh, of course, if you really like this video and you'd like to keep up with my new videos as they come out, subscribe button, probably around here, somewhere-ish, yeah. Um, and of course, if you have any questions or comments, uh, as if you've ever had trouble finding it before, comments box on the bottom check it out and uh see you next time whenever the hell that is ciao